Hey friends, hope you're doing well. Today we're going to talk about setting up Tailwind CSS with SwellKit. I assume you already know what Tailwind CSS is, but I'm going to spend a minute explaining it. And if you already know about Tailwind and just interested in the setup, you can skip this part. But basically Tailwind is a utility first CSS framework. Tailwind CSS isn't a UI component framework because it just gives you some utilities. So one utility in Tailwind corresponds to a single line of CSS. So for example, in Tailwind, font bold is equal to, you would have guessed in CSS, font bold 700 or whatever. But yeah, let's get this out of the way and let's set up Tailwind with SwellKit. Let's set up Tailwind CSS. You can create a new SwellKit project or add Tailwind to an existing project. And as always, you can find example repository on GitHub. So I'm going to open a terminal inside an empty project and I'm going to use PNPM, but you can use whatever you want. So I'm going to say PNPM create Svelte. And then we're going to go through the installer I'm going to leave it blank, skeleton project, so it's just empty. TypeScript, of course, let's add the slint. And this one is important, so you want to add Prettier for the next step we're going to go through, but if you're using an existing project and you don't have Prettier for whatever reason, I have some instructions in the post how you can set up Prettier and it's basically straightforward to just installing the package and that's it. So we can say yes, and then we can also add Playwright, but I'm not going to do it right now. And then we need to install the packages, so I'm going to say pnpmi. Awesome, now we can install some dependencies that Tailwind requires. So we can say pmpmi, development dependencies, and we can say Tailwind CSS, and then we need post CSS and auto prefixer. So we can also give it a second for this to install. And now we can create the Tailwind config. So we can say pnpx Tailwind CSS, and it's going to invoke the Tailwind CSS CLI, and it's going to run this init script, Tailwind config, .cjs, which is going to get created at the root of our project. And let me close this, and on the side we're going to see it created the file, and it also created a post CSS config, which we don't have to touch, so you can ignore it for now. And now let's just give it a file so it knows where the classes for Tailwind are. So we can just replace this content. You can just copy paste this. I got this from the Tailwind documentation, so really nothing special. Yeah, let's just save this file. And now we need to add the Tailwind directives to our CSS. So again, you can go here, you can copy this over, and I'm going to close this file, and inside the project I have source, and let me just see in routes, there's nothing, so I can just create app CSS at the root, or you can do whatever you want. And now we just need to include this file in the layout, because it's how we include a global CSS file in Selkit. In routes, we can create layout, Selt, and we can just create a script tag. We can import the styles, app CSS, and don't forget to pass it a slot, and we can save it. And you're done, so let's see if it works. So in routes, here's the page. Let me just create a H1 again. I can say heading, and let me just start the development server, pnpm run dev, and this should be available. Let me just close this. So we can go to localhost, 5173, and right now there should be nothing. So we already know Tailwind is working because Tailwind does unstyled by default for everything. So for example, we can go to app HTML in our project and on the body tag, we can say class. And since I have the Tailwind extension, I'm going to get recommendations, but we can say BG gray 900. And for the text, I want it to be white. And this is going to update, which is awesome. So we can close this and let's just add some styles here. So we can say class, we can just say, hey, display grid, 100 vertical, place content center, text this size, let me just save it, and now it should work. Awesome, we got Tailwind working. This is awesome, but let's take our Tailwind experience to the next level by enabling automatic class sorting with Prettier. First, make sure you have the Prettier extension installed and it's the default formatter in your VS Code settings. So if I press Control X in my editor, I can go and see my extensions. And here we should see the Tailwind one. I have Tailwind IntelliSense, but I also have another one, which is prettier. Here it is. Yeah. So make sure you have that. And then let me just close that. If you press control P and you do the pointy boy, start typing settings, you can go to your settings JSON. And I prefer using JSON over the UI because it creates a portable file, even if you have automatic sync in VS Code these days. But yeah, I always prefer this. So I can just open that configuration file. Let me just close this. And I'm going to find edit or format on save. As you can see, I have format on save enabled true. So when you press save in your file, it's going to pretty format everything. 
And then the default formatter is going to be this. And of course, I'm using the Svelte extension. So the default formatter for that is going to be the Svelte one. And you can leave this and you don't have to change anything. And also have instructions in the post if you're doing this for an already existing project, how you can add Prettier if you're curious. But now let's get to installing the Prettier plugin for Tailwind CSS. So let me just close this and now I can open the terminal, control C to stop the development server. And now we can just install the plugin. We can say pnpm id prettier plugin tailwind css install this. And while this is installed, let me explain that because SwellKit uses prettier plugin Svelte, so if you go to package JSON, prettier plugin Svelte, basically the tailwind css plugin does something weird, so it conflicts with this plugin because it uses some third party APIs that aren't documented or whatever, it's not important. But basically we need to remove the Svelte Prettier plugin. But thankfully the Prettier plugin Tailwind CSS includes the plugin for you so everything should work as before. So now we just need to uninstall it. And in my case this is pnpm remove. So we can say Prettier plugin Svelte. And now we also need to remove the plugins from the Prettier config. This is a mistake I've done earlier. Let me just close this. And I'm going to close package JSON. So here is your Prettier RC. You just have to remove this plugins line because it's going to crash it and basically it's just going to pick up the Tailwind CSS plugin automatically for you. So you just need to remove this line and then if you save it, everything should work fine. And I also mentioned in the post that you don't have to change your formatter and let's just see if this works. So if I go here, I'm going to close this, control P and let me open our homepage so I can do this. And if something is not working, you might need to restart your editor. And I'm curious if this is going to work. So let's see, moment of truth. And awesome, it works. Let me share some useful Tailwind CSS tips that are going to improve the quality of life of using Tailwind dramatically. If you need a component library for Tailwind, there's Tailwind UI, but it's paid. And if you're looking for a free one, you can use Daisy UI. So you can go to Daisy UI and it's the most popular free and open source Tailwind CSS component library. So if that's something you're interested in, the components are gorgeous and it's awesome, so give it a try. But yeah, let's go back to our list. Let's talk about extensions. So if I press Control X again, you can see I have the Tailwind CSS IntelliSense extension, and that's going to give you auto-completion in your editor so you don't have to look up the documentation constantly, which is awesome. So you can go straight ahead and you can install it if you want in VS Code. Yeah, this is basically it. And you get this awesome auto-completions which would otherwise be a nightmare to remember. But yeah, that's the thing with Tailwind, you really don't have to remember. Tailwind is in itself very intuitive to you, so you're going to always know what you have to find. But if that's not the case, let me just close this, you can use the Tailwind CSS cheat sheet to get a glance of what you need right now. So you can find the options you need. You can just have this open on your second monitor or whatever, and you can look at the values. And this paired with the official Tailwind CSS extension is really powerful. And also I want to mention that you shouldn't forget that you can place your long class names inside the variable because this is the point uh, that people have against Tailwind. It's like, oh, the classes are so long. And Tailwind has the apply directive, of course, where you can extract your styles, but it's actually actively discouraged by the creator of Tailwind in this tweet. Confession, the apply feature in Tailwind basically only exists to trick people who are put off by long list of classes into trying the framework. So the creator himself is saying that you should almost never use it and reuse your HTML instead. So you can chuck it in a variable and that's basically it. And really Tailwind doesn't really become a problem, like it looks like a nightmare when you inspect a site, but you're often dealing with smaller components, right? And it's really not that bad inside those components. It's just when it's all put together, of course, it's a soup of class names, right? <laughs> But yeah, if I go back, another tip I have for you is enabling word wrap in your editor. So if I go back to this example, this is kind of like hard, right? When you're like working with these long class names, so you can press control Z and you're going to have word wrap and it's going to make working with Tailwind CSS much more pleasant. And another thing I want to mention is the headwind extension. If for whatever reason, this automatic sorting of classes in Tailwind doesn't work for you, in the past, I remember using this extension and it's really awesome. So you can give it a try if the other methods don't work for you. All right, so that's it. Despite the drama around the Tailwind CSS is a great way for moving quick without distraction and it feels great because of it, but it doesn't compensate for not understanding CSS because a Tailwind class is just a line of regular CSS. 
and Tailwind CSS is not a UI component framework. And it's also not all or nothing. If you decide at a later point in your project that you don't want to use Tailwind anymore, that's perfectly fine because it's a great prototyping tool and you can replace it with regular CSS using something like open props if you want. Alright, so that's going to be it for me. Thank you for watching and catch you in the next one.